Today, I'm gonna to be telling you why you should not be downloading the iOS 14 beta. Like it or not, you need to hear this. If you're looking for tech reviews that give you the information that you actually care about, then hit that subscribe button and be sure to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Last week during WWDC, Apple announced the latest and greatest OS's for all five of their devices. iOS, iPadOS, watchOS, tvOS, and macOS. The purpose of releasing the beta early to developers is allow them to get their apps and their software ready for the official release of the OS later this year. Flashback to March 6, 2008, Apple previewed its iPhone 2.0 software scheduled for release later that June and announced immediate availability of beta software for selected amount of developers. You hear that? Just a few developers. What occurred soon after was the developer program blew up because the Apple App Store blew up. So many creators created so many apps that they needed to expand that program to allow everyone to be able to get their apps on the App Store. And of course they started paying developers, which hey, nothing wrong with that if you've got the skills to do it. Now the programs included a ton of spots that you could add devices to. So I think what eventually started happening was software developers gave it to their friends, and in some cases they sold them to people. Heck, I think a couple years later when I started doing YouTube videos, I bought a beta spot so I could show off the iOS beta. I think I told myself I was going to do some videos, but uh, well, the iOS 14 beta that I did about a week or so ago, that's the first video I've ever done on an iOS beta. So better late than never? At first we saw some great videos of people showing off the new features with a disclaimer that this was super early beta and a lot had to be worked out. Eventually what ended up happening was people started getting the beta on the regular phones, stuff wasn't working and they were complaining about it. They were complaining about software not working on beta, something that wasn't supposed to be out to the public. You put it on your main device, it didn't work, so you complained. See where I'm going with this? Before we get started, if you've seen iOS 14 in action, what's your favorite feature that you've seen so far? Go ahead and comment down below and let me know. Now on to my top five reasons why you should not be downloading iOS 14 on your device. Reason number one, I'm seeing videos of creators showing people how to get the software downloaded for free from some unknown site. Again, do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? You wanna download something onto your device from a site that you don't know. Listen, something may happen, nothing may happen, but your information is now being released to a company that you have no idea who it is, and if Apple shuts that down, it could potentially brick your device. Number two, do not pay someone to have your name added to their list so your device could be approved. First off, it's against Apple's terms of service with that person. It's not a crime, however, if Apple decides to drop the hammer on people like that for selling it, then you, again, could end up with a brick device. Reason number three, now you could lose all of your data and information on your phone since you've upgraded because it is on beta. Now before you've upgraded to iOS 14, you should have backed up your device on the latest iOS 13 software that they do have. If you haven't, then you stand to potentially lose even more information that is on your phone. You could have no problems up until September or October when they release the new device, but if you do lose it, you lose everything for the months that you've had it. Is that worth it? Number four is a little bit of a repeat, and me doing a little bit of give and take for those of you who are out there who really do want to try it, and I can't convince you otherwise. Instead of downloading it from some slimy unknown site, Apple will be offering a public beta later in July. Now, the software could be a little bit more stable. However, reason number five is going to be yet another reason why I don't think you should. If your iPhone is your only device and it is your main driver for everything that you do, why would you potentially want to break that device or lose anything or have any problems like any of the four reasons that I just mentioned? If you have a backup device, that's great. But how many of us have extra iPhones lying around the, that we're not using? You don't need the aggravation. As a matter of fact, since I've downloaded iOS 14 on my iPhone, I've had a myriad of problems. Applications to let me go in and look at my larger files on settings doesn't work. When I use widgets on my front page, for example, I did the battery widget on the bottom right corner of my screen. Anything I place next to that on the bottom row would just disappear. 
At first I thought it moved to the other screen, but no, it was gone. And it just so happened I had my YouTube apps on there. So it's a minor inconvenience that you have to go and put them back on there. But every time I did it, a day or so later, they would just delete. So those are the things that you have happen or apps not working at all. Like I said earlier, the purpose of the beta program is to allow developers to get their apps and their software ready. Now, of course, when they do the beta release, it allows the software to be used in real world situations for those that are able to do it. If you want to risk it and put it on your main device, I guess that's up to you. But all the complaining that I used to read and hear would be things people doing exactly this. They put it on their device, they'd have problems, and they'd blame the software saying, why isn't it working? Well, you are on beta. And I am almost 100% sure those who download it for fun are not using the feedback app to go in and painstakingly write every little problem that you had when something happened on the phone. If the phone froze or you shut it down or had to reboot it, are you gonna take the time to go in and give the feedback to Apple so they know to fix that problem? Most people aren't. So the problem is gonna go unfixed potentially. It's called beta for a reason. And whether it's something that Apple does or any other software company, it's not technically for consumer use. So keep that in mind. If you'd like to safely see some of the features that are on iOS 14, go ahead and check out my video right here. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for all your continued support. You have a good day and I'll see you in the next video.